Thank you, Karine, for your kind words. And hi, we're BTS. And it is a great honor to be invited to the White House. BTS visits White House. There are a lot of great things going on in the world. People are coming together against injustice. They are uniting and fighting for what is right. This is one of the most beautiful things I have ever seen. Welcome to K-Pop Megastars, and here we bring you everything related to K-Pop. And today, we are talking about BTS visits to the White House. They braved the scorching sun, jammed their faces against the fence, and clutched their cameras in the hopes of catching a glimpse of their idols. On the 31st of May, the dozens of youthful fans at the White House gates resembled a pop concert. But it wasn't for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, whose approval ratings are falling. BTS, the Korean pop sensation, was in town to inject a shot of excitement into a lethargic Washington, explore Asian inclusion and representation, and address hate crimes against Asians. BTS popularity was also visible in the White House press briefing room as South Korean and Japanese journalists stood in the aisles. By this, you can guess how excited everyone was for their presence. Not as excited as we fans were, obviously, but a band at the White House is a big deal. Oh wow! said the White House press secretary, Karine Jean-Pierre. So much excitement. She joked, I know, it's the Fed chair meeting, right? J-Hope, Suga, Jungkook, V, Jin, RM, and Jimin, BTS seven members, lined up behind her, dressed in dark suits, white shirts, and black ties. They were looking like actors from Men in Black and Reservoir Dogs. Each of them made brief speeches, largely in Korean, with the help of an interpreter. We were devastated by the recent spike in hate crimes, especially hate attacks against Asian Americans, Jimin said. To put an end to injustice and support the cause, we'd like to use this chance to speak out once more. Before we move any further, why don't you tell us who is your favorite member in the comments? BTS has become known for its lyrics and social efforts aiming at uplifting young people since its debut in 2013. The Grammy-nominated boy band expressed gratitude to their army of fans for their unwavering support and commended their diversity. We are here once again owing to our army, our fans around the world, who represent many nationalities, cultures, and languages. J-Hope added, We owe you our undying gratitude. We are still shocked that South Korean musicians' music reaches so many people around the world, overcoming language and cultural barriers, Jungkook continued. We believe that music is a magnificent and amazing unifier of all things. On the last day of Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, the group filed out without accepting questions and walked the short distance to the Oval Office. Brian Dees, director of the National Economic Council, was up next at the briefing room podium, a technocrat who isn't one of Washington's more colorful or flamboyant individuals. As the international media contingent left the aisles and some reporters giggled at the abrupt gear shift, he lifted his eyebrows and smiled wryly, slipping a pen into his breast pocket. Dees said, OK, so I get to go home and tell my kids that BTS opened for me. I did not expect that when I woke up this morning, and I know that you're all here to talk about trimmed mean inflation, and you're as excited about that as you care for them. Trimmed mean inflation, it turned out, did not make anyone's heart race. BTS had been filming a music video at the White House, and Jean Pierre was later questioned. She did not confirm or deny it. So there could be a chance that we would see the White House in the next video, but just to be safe, don't get your expectations all high. I don't want you to get disappointed in the end. You heard from them directly about how important it was for them to use their platform to be here to talk about issues that matter to them, in particular the anti-Asian hate that we have seen across this country these past few years," the press secretary said. According to the Center for the Study of Hate and Extremism, crimes against Asian Americans increased by more than 300 percent last year, while Donald Trump continues to blame China for the COVID-19 outbreak. Last year, Biden signed into law a bipartisan bill aimed at combating the rise in anti-Asian hate crimes. Biden's visit to the BTS was one of his most unconventional days since taking office. He met with New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, a political rock star in her own way, had lunch with Harris, and met with Federal Reserve Board Chairman Jerome Powell and Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen earlier in the day. The group's visit comes just days after Biden returned from his first trip to Asia as president, which included a three-day stop in Seoul and meetings with South Korean President Yoon Suk-yeol, who was just elected. 
Biden has previously spoken about his commitment to tackling the surge of anti-Asian hate crimes, according to a White House news release announcing the meeting. He signed a bipartisan bill aimed at addressing the rise in anti-Asian hate crimes into law in May 2021. It will create a new position at the Justice Department to expedite the review of any COVID-19 related hate crimes and events that have been reported at the federal, state, or local levels. Biden and BTS will also discuss the significance of diversity and inclusion, as well as BTS platform as youth ambassadors who carry a message of hope and optimism around the world," the White House noted. Now the 79-year following Old's meeting with BTS will be remembered in the same way as Richard Nixon's rendezvous with Elvis Presley in 1970 was remembered. These are the small efforts that are going to change the world for the good. Let's just hope these things make a better future and we can just live in the world without indifference. This was all for today. Do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you support the cause of BTS. We'll see you at the next one.